Ruby Riot. Ruby Riot, since returning to WWE television, has gone winless in her last 11 matches. She has an 0 and 11 record with that loss to Peyton Royce on Monday night. Now, I have seen rumors that the plan is for her and Liv Morgan ultimately to come together in their losing ways, to come together as a tag team, to, to reunite that part of the Riot squad as a team, and then they can, I guess, start winning matches, and they can go on to challenge for the women's tag team titles. But I, it looks like they're doing some sort of losing streak angle. We haven't even seen Liv wrestle, I think, in many weeks on television. It's been weeks since Liv Morgan's had a match. And Ruby Riot just continues to lose and lose and lose and lose. Liv Morgan was scheduled to be on Raw. She was not on the show for some reason. So they decided to feed Ruby another loss. And I have to give credit where it's due. Peyton Royce... In this match, it was not a long match, it was not a great match, but I will say that Peyton Royce looked damn impressive. She hit this jumping roundhouse kick that was beautiful, immediately into a spinning brain buster to finish off Ruby. That was impressive. See, we need to see that Peyton Royce more often. Where the hell did that come from? <laughs> Where the hell did that come from? By the way, still no Shayna Baszler on this show. And now it appears that we know why. It has nothing to do with her opting to stay home during the pandemic. I was trying to give them the benefit of the doubt and say, well, you know, maybe this was Shane's choice. Let's not jump on Vince McMahon in WWE yet. Maybe it was her choice. Some wrestlers have made the choice. Kevin Owens stayed home for a few weeks. Roman Reigns is home. Sami Zayn is home. Maybe she made a choice. Nope. <laughs> not the case. It has nothing to do with that. Vince McMahon is said to have soured on Shayna Baszler. Well, that didn't take very long, now did it? That did not take very long. Yet another NXT talent brought to the main roster to flounder for no reason at all. One of the most dominant champions in NXT history. You have three hours to fill every Monday night on your show. You can't find a fucking role for this woman on your show? Really? Really? You debut her as a vampire? only to go and lose at WrestleMania. You know, Becky Lynch was on the Bella Twins podcast on uh, whatever day it drops. I couldn't bring myself to, to listen to the full thing, but I heard the clip, and she was on the show. She talked about, or she revealed, I think, for the first time that she pitched the idea to management, Vince McMahon, whoever it was, she pitched the idea of dropping the Raw Women's Championship championship easy for me to say, to Shayna at WrestleMania. Which I think a lot of people figured that that was going to happen anyway because it had been one full year of Becky Lynch as the Raw Women's Champion. And at some point, you need someone or something to chase after. It was the right time to go ahead and take that title off of Becky Lynch. Especially after the dominant performance that they had Shayna Baszler put in at the Elimination Chamber. It was all for nothing. It was all for nothing. I can't blame people. The people who didn't get excited after the Elimination Chamber. Just the fact, I mean, honestly, the match itself was, the way they booked that whole thing was ridiculous. But, I mean, I understand keeping her dominant, but just the way that whole thing was structured was just not good television. But she got a dominant win. And they squandered it. They did nothing with it. Not only did she get beat at WrestleMania, they didn't even beat her decisively. It was like a fluky kind of pin. She went to Money in the Bank. She didn't win Money in the Bank. She was on TV a few times after Money in the Bank, and she has been MIA ever since. So whatever kind of dominant stuff they did with her initially, what did it all mean? It's already forgotten about. It's old hat. It's old news. That was February. That was March. It's now July. But Becky Lynch said that she pitched the idea of dropping the championship to Shayna Baszler. And she was rejected. You know why she was rejected? Because it made too much sense. Maybe Vince McMahon should send Bruce back to SmackDown and let Becky run Raw via Zoom from her home. Shayna Baszler is said to, quote, not check off Vince McMahon's boxes when it comes to what he sees in a woman's wrestler. Hey, what did I say? 
What did I say a few months ago? If she goes and dyes her hair blonde, I guarantee you she'll be the women's champion by SummerSlam. Her chances of at least being on television, maybe not, forget being the champion, her chances of at least being on TV go up exponentially if you just put a blonde wig on her head or you put blonde streaks in her hair. Then she'll check off some of Vince McMahon's boxes. This was all very predictable. You don't have to think that Shayna Baszler should be the champion. I know not everybody is a big fan of Shayna Baszler's work. They think she's boring. There are people who comment on her looks and her appearances. Or her appearance. I mean, she, you know, she didn't look any different in NXT than she does now. I personally don't give a shit about it. Who cares? There are people who said the same things about uh, Ruby Riot when she got called out. Ruby Riot is a very good wrestler. Ruby Riot was actually getting a push for a while and having some of the best women's matches on Monday Night Raw before she went in for the shoulder surgery. She had double shoulder surgery. She was out a very long time. Hopefully they didn't Brutus Beefcake her where she got hurt, came back, and now her career will never be the same again. I'd like to see her try to get back to you know her winning ways at some point. That would be nice. I think the Raw Women's Division could use that boost. I don't care what your thoughts are on Shayna Baszler as the champion or whatever. There is a role for her on this show. She had a role that worked for her in NXT. You can adapt that and you can make it work on Monday Night Raw. There is a role for her on the show. We get four fucking segments with the big show. They can't spare a segment or two for Shayna Baszler? But you see, it's a self-fulfilling prophecy. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter. Can't get over if you're never on TV. Now, there's a quick update here on Kyrie Sane. Kyrie Sane, we have not seen her for several weeks now on television. A lot of rumors flying around that her career could be over or that she could be out soon of WWE. Uh, per the Observer, the latest update is that she is going back to Japan, at least temporarily, to be with her husband. She had just gotten married earlier this year. In February, she got married. And I guess her husband's in Japan. She's been working here. So she's going to go back home uh, to be with him for, for a bit. And the company has known about this for a while. This was not a kind of a sudden decision or anything. And I guess that there was an idea on the table. There was a creative pitch on the table before the last injury happened with uh, Nia Jax where Nia, you know, they were in a match and Kyrie got her head split open on the ring steps and knocked herself out outside the ring. Not the first time she's been uh, roughed up in a match with Nia Jax. But they were planning to do a story where she would suffer some kind of career-ending injury. There would be a, a storyline injury angle that apparently was not going to involve Nia. It would have been somebody else causing some kind of career-ending or career-threatening injury that would keep Sane off television, possibly for good, if she you know, ended up not coming back, uh, but for, for a while, at the very least. And... All we know is that the person was not going to be Nia Jax, which tells me, I mean, I guess it could have been Charlotte, but it tells me that that, again, would have been the perfect spot for a Shayna Baszler. But she doesn't check Vince McMahon's boxes. She doesn't check his boxes. But tell me that would not have been the perfect spot for Shayna Baszler. Because then it would have led directly into a match and a feud with Asuka. Things should have been building to Asuka and Shayna, the two most dominant women's champions in the history of NXT. But I don't know if that was the plan. That I don't know. But there's been talk about Kyrie maybe being some kind of global ambassador to the company, which tells me that they, they don't see maybe there being much of an in-ring future for her. Look, Kyrie has had a string of bad luck with injuries since coming to the main roster. And wrestling Nia Jax has not helped. Wrestling Nia Jax in 2020 is like what going to Action Park was for people in the 80s and the 90s. You took your life into your own hands when you walked into that amusement park. Anybody who remembers Action Park, you know exactly what I'm talking about. <laughs> if not, there are documentaries on YouTube you can look for if you want to know more about Action Park. There's a reason they used to call it Class Action Park. The longest line of the park was the first aid line. But at least Action Park was fun. 
But look, if she chooses to go back home, if that's what she wants to do, I wish her well. I think it's a shame that things did not work out for her as well as a lot of us had hoped uh, or, or worked out for her as well as they did in NXT. You know, sadly, that seems to be a recurring pattern with far too many people. Some people come up from NXT and they have great success. A lot of people come up and they don't. Now, are there certain people who come to the main roster and get exposed? Yeah, it's possible. Kyrie Sane is not one of those people. Kyrie Sane is is one of the premier female wrestlers in the world. And the fact that she just never really had a great deal of success on the main roster, you know, it it makes me very sad because there was a lot of potential there. And look, she did win the raw the uh, WWE Women's Tag Team Titles with Asuka. She had some success, but not as much as she should have. Still one of the one of the most beautiful diving elbow drops that I've ever seen. People talk about the macho man and they talk about like great looking elbow drops. When I was seeing her drop that elbow on people in NXT, I even I even compared it to the Randy Savage elbow. I think I might have even said that it looked even nicer than the Randy Savage elbow. Of course, that upset people. Oh, how dare you disparage the great name of the macho man? I was disparaging the name of the macho man. I was complimenting Kyrie Sane. But we just never, we never really got that Kyrie on the main roster. And so health-wise, I hope she's fine. If she's still not totally recovered, I hope she recovers soon. And it's just too bad. You know, it's too bad we couldn't see her do more on the main roster. 